My name is Karen Lee. Um, make a long, long story short, my son has been fighting a narcotics case ever since November the 2nd of 2006. We've had 14 continuances on this case, with 16 continuances, and four must be tried. Um, like you were saying, it has to be at the request of, I believe, Commonwealth in order for it to be derived for a certain time. We have Judge Rayford Means, who is a maniac, okay, who's they call been on this case. He truly <laughs> is, and he's one that should really be, I mean, like, ran, ran out on the rail. But um, <laughs> he's tried everything he's tried to, I mean, everything he's been doing and beyond his power and within his power to benefit this entire case. And the last thing he did was April the 30th. Um, my son was looking at 20 to 40 years on this drug case. Uh, the, the, the initial jury hung, the initial trial ended, at, ended in a hung jury. Uh, Eleven not guilty, one guilty. And Judge, Judge DeMeans decided to make it a, uh, to continue the case again. So we've had 14 continuances um, thus far. And to make a long story short, um, he sent the cops to our house, about seven officers saying they were federal agents. We were supposed to have guns, drugs, stolen cars. And um, it was the day of his trial. And because they didn't find anything, he because he got arrested on a bench warrant, he gave him a million dollar bail. Saying was a bench warrant. We've been fighting this case for a long time now, and the last offer was as of last week, uh, 15 months probation from 20 years, mm. 20 to 40 to 15 months time served. And my son won't take the plea because he's not guilty. And so we just you know when you're talking about being railroaded and being manipulated. And, you know, we've had four lawyers on this case. We had Tariq Al-Shabazz, another joke, all right, who took our money and ran. So, you know, we're just to the point now where you know, we don't know where to go, where to turn to. You know, I'm a court reporter for the police department. I've been demoted and transferred behind misconduct, behind police lying on me. I went to internal affairs and, and unwittingly gave a statement. All right, and they wouldn't sustain the complaint. So we have just been railroaded all the way around on this criminal injustice system. So we like to know, I mean, myself personally, I know uh, President Obama talked about change, 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 and grassroots, grassroots, grassroots. So I really think that we need to, I mean, you know, I'm willing to Yahoo, national, whatever, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I've been calling all around, trying to find out what can we do, where can I go, in order to really bring attention to what's happening in the yeah. city. And you know, I'm just glad I'm here. I'm, I'm just putting it out. You know. Judge Means, when I first met Judge Means, I was in the public defender's office in 1983, and um, he was a district attorney at the time. And um, we used to joke around a lot. And then, then what he did was, it was a, a pregnant woman who was a witness in the case. And um, she, just like a lot of other witnesses in this city, decided that they're not going to protect her. She's not going to testify. Uh, Judge Me he was DA Means at the time, had her locked up uh, for failing to come forth and testify. And that's when uh, there was an Italian judge, uh, uh, Coppolino from mm -hmm. South Philly. He named him Mad Dog Means. <laughs> and uh, when Judge Means took the bench, he took the bench with the blessing and support of Lynn Abraham. Um, and and he, he gave a black guy a break. I don't know if y'all remember, it was all in the news. And he let the guy off, the guy went out and shot yes. somebody or something. And from then on, the judge means he's been a hanging judge. He has no business on that bench. Mm -hmm. And we, that's when I was saying we have to organize politically. Yeah. We got to get people that judge means on that bench. Mm -hmm. How? Politically. You know, we have to, Mike had, did you show the program? Yeah, yeah. yeah, Mike has a program where we have to go into those courtrooms and sit there because the saddest thing about a courtroom is it's empty. Mm -hmm. And there's nobody there generally but the, the prosecutor, the defense lawyer, the judge, you know? Yeah. I, I could say for 100%, I, I called you about this same case. Yeah. And he kicks people out the courtroom. Is that legal? No. Mm -hmm. He can if you. Uh, he told everybody that was there for this yeah, man yeah. case, get out the court. If not, he's not a juvenile, right? No. This is exactly what you know we do because, as Brother Leon said, you know, first of all, every case 
there's a legal trial and there's a political trial. You know, the fact is judges are publicly elected officials and all that stuff, and right. anything that they do needs to be under, you know, the public scrutiny. People need to know about these crimes that they're committing against us, but more than that, we have to let the court system know that we're not just going to sit down, idly by, and allow them to railroad us, throw us in jail, like we throw away the key and all this. So part of what we do is while brothers Leon and Michael are there, you know, uh, making the struggle for us um, behind the bench, we also make a political struggle in that same courtroom uh, around not only my case, uh, Shabaka's case, but our brother Lamar and others, hopefully, who will come forward in this process. We actually will go to uh, your hearing, to your trial, stand by your side as an organization, uh, politicize the case, expose all the racism and the whole parasitic nature of the court system, and we're going to talk a little bit later about some of the ca cases that we've taken on with Brother Lamar, Brother Dewan, and others. Uh, and, you know, we saw some of the flyers here, but the whole point is that they get away with what we allow them to get away with. But if we organize politically, uh, make sure that they don't make any moves without resistance from the African community, then we guarantee that they won't get away with it. In my case, which we'll discuss later on, our organization, we have people call uh, from all over the world saying hands off Dion so that when that judge goes into the um, into the courtroom they shook up already literally we had uh, Judge Means doing one of our hearings and Judge Means I mean he wasn't mad dog that day because Judge Means got a number of phone calls from members of the International People's Democratic Ohuda Movement demanding that hands off brother Diop and brother Shabaka and when our hearing came up the first thing that came out of his mouth was you know he doesn't want to get involved with this this is too political for him. He doesn't want to get caught up in all this talk about conspiracy and all this. I mean, he wasn't saying that to, uh, to Daquan or Tyrone, right? That's because our brothers and sisters don't have the benefit of organization, which is why we're doing this right now. Because it ain't no difference between our case and any of y'all cases or the ca uh, cases our communities face <coughs> as a whole. So this is the beginning of a whole process that uh, we're going to be talking about more. And we're calling on y'all to actually join the organization become part of the struggle and to resist against what they do to us in the courts. We'll get a whole different type of response in relationship to the courts if we show that we organize. What about, I mean, do we have any more um, response to Sister Lee? I want them to get yeah. away. I know um, the brother has started uh, <coughs> talking about what else we can do for uh, Sister Lee while she's here today. Yeah. Before we get away from Well, it's that. a couple of things. Uh, one, let me, before I get to that, uh, Brother Diop is actually being really <coughs> modest in terms of his approach to Judge Means because when we were in court a couple months ago, I know Judge Means' his reputation, and I get there and I see Brother Diop and Brother Shabaka, and we're in the courtroom, and I take Brother Diop to the side, and we're talking legal strategy, and as soon as we finish, Brother Diop started yelling in the courtroom about injustice, and raised up like, oh, shit. But he was, like, going off, and the courtroom just stopped, and they started listening to this black man talking about racism and injustice, and it was just amazing how the tables turned, because usually black people go into the courtroom scared, timid, passive, and now he's sitting up next to me, yelling and screaming, and then he's right. When Judge Means came out, I've never seen Judge Means that docile. I've never seen him so laid back. It's like the tables had turned, and it was about organization. That's critically important. One other thing I'll say before I get to Sister's point, actually, this applies to the point. Leon alluded to this group I started called JTJ, JTJ. And that stands for judging the judges. Mm -hmm. And what we do is the same way we talk about policing the police, we judge the judges. So if you go to our website, it's under construction, but it's at judgingthejudges.info. That's www.judgingthejudges.info. And our 24-hour phone number is 215-552-8785. 215-552-8785. And we tell you to give us the names of the judges, tell us the dates, tell us what happened, and then we organize around that. So the website, www.judgingthejudges.info or 215-552-8785. Judges are like tenants and the public are the landlords. Let me repeat that. Judges are like tenants. So this brother pointed out how a judge said, get out of my courtroom. No, that's like a tenant telling a landlord to get out of the house. The house belongs to that landlord. We're the land. We actually put those judges in those courtrooms.